Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Today we're going to make another pot holder uh, in our fruity pot holder series. Last time we made this apple. Now, if you followed me on that video, you'll notice that I've changed the leaves. I had them kind of going down and I took them off and put them up because I realized it kept looking like a toma more like a tomato than an apple to me. And I realized it was the way I had the leaves placed and that the leaves really should be sticking up. So I took them off and changed them. Uh, but this is our apple. And today, you can probably guess, we're going to make an orange. This is going to be our orange fabric, and this is our leaf fabric. This is really cute fabric. It's got little googly eyes. I don't know if you can see them, but they're, it's a minion print that's just real hint of minions in there. Okay, what we're going to need is... First of all, a piece of Inselbrite that is about seven and a half inches wide and 10 inches tall. We're gonna need our pattern. And this pattern, I'm gonna do something a little different on. So it's got two pieces. And we're gonna need a piece of orange fabric, whatever, I assume you want orange fabric for an orange. Uh, that's seven and a half by ten for the front and one for the back and I'm using both the same color now I went ahead and cut it out this time last time I quilted it first and the reason I went ahead and cut it out is because I'm going to do something a little different on this one I didn't want just a big old round circle I just didn't think that looked right. So, you know what? I need to cut out my insel bright the same size too because I'll never be able to get the front and the back lined up if I don't do that. Okay, there we go. Now, if you don't know what Inselbrite is, it is a uh, batting that is insulated. And uh, you want that in your pot holders to help protect. Batting alone is not really as that, it's not really as good. Uh, I mean, it's not as good, but it's not really even good enough. I, you can put Inselbrite and batting both. As a matter of fact, I think the instructions say to do that but that makes for an awful thick pot holder so when we quilt it we're going to put it together like this and it looks like my googly eyes are upside down wouldn't you know it now i have just ordered a bolt of um Pellon's version of Insel Bright. Pellon always makes good products, so I'm hoping that it will be as good. Uh, it was pretty uh, much more economical than to buy Insel Bright one yard at a time. So there are other brands of this out there. Okay, we are going to quilt this up and then I'll show you what we do next. We're just going to give it a little character. But the first thing we want to do is our leaf. So I'm going to put right sides together. I'm going to put a piece of Inselbrite on the back of that. And then I'm just going to trace, might be easier to trace it on a hard surface, my leaf on here. And I will have all these templates available in my Etsy shop once I'm through with this series. 
I haven't decided how many pot holders. I've got about seven or eight. Some of them are partially designed, some are fully designed, but um, we'll see how many we end up doing. Okay, I'm gonna lay my pattern aside. By the way, this started out as a seven inch circle. Um, it's a leaf pattern. Then I, I cut out a piece and then I added a quarter inch there and on the bottom here so we can overlap them. So if you want to make your own pattern, you can do that. We're also going to need some bias, about a yard of bias, and I want mine to match. So I cut this out of a piece of fabric. Let me see if I can demonstrate it. For those of you who have not cut bias before, you lay your fabric, now this fabric I've got folded, but you want yours laid out completely. And you see, I have a 45 degree line on my cutting table. Most rulers have a 45 degree line too. So I just took a piece of fabric, started it where my 45 degree line that and then I cut using my ruler on the 45 degree line and I just cut several pieces in a row you can maybe that's the way they went together yeah so I anyway I cut them an inch and a quarter wide. Then I'm going to take them to the sewing machine and sew them together like this. And I haven't done that yet because I don't have orange thread on my machine at the moment. I have green thread so we could do the leaves first. So I will do that when I switch over the uh, thread. Okay, back to our leaf. No, not back to our leaf yet. <laughs> I'm a little disorganized here. Um, we need also a five inch by one inch piece of the green for our stem that's also going to hang our pot holder up. So we need this too. The first thing I want to do, I'm going to move all my pattern pieces aside so I don't lose them. So I can make up my templates. Okay, my iron is not steaming very good right now, so I'm gonna clean it out first chance I get. But in the meantime, instead of steam, I'm using my best press. Mary Ellen's best press. This is a starch alternative. It's wonderful. I get the lavender scent. It comes in various scents and even unscented, and I highly recommend it. I buy it by the gallon and then just put it in a squirt bottle. Give it a little squirt, and it even takes out those center creases on fabric. Okay. I'm going to fold this in half lengthwise just to get that crease, okay? And then I'm going to fold up to that crease on both sides. Essentially, I'm, I'm ironing under a quarter of inch on both sides. Then I'm going to fold it in half again and we're just going to have a tiny little strip of fabric here for our loop but there's a little steam coming out. 
it doesn't have any raw edges because they're folded in. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and just top stitch it right here close to the edge. And we'll do that in just a minute because I'm going to do that. At the same time, I cut out my, I mean, I stitch my leaf. Uh, this looks like about the flattest piece on this, the straightest piece. So I'll probably sew it like this and leave, leave an opening right there. Now, the template is where you stitch. We're going to trim it then a quarter of an inch outside of that. We can even do that before we go to the sewing machine if we want. Don't have quite a quarter of an inch there, but it'll be okay. I don't need any of that extra batting. Okay, so I'm going to take it over, leave me a little gap to turn it, and just stitch around there, and I'm going to stitch my loop. So let's go do that. Here's our little loop already, and I hope I left a big enough hole to turn this. One thing I didn't mention is I've, I'm using a piece of insel bright in this, but batting is fine because you're not going to be picking uh, any hot food up with the leaf part of it. So, or hot dishes. I'm going to trim it up just a little bit more. Kind of clip the corners a little bit. Make sure I didn't clip through the thread on the back side like I did last time. Now let's see if I left a big enough hole to turn this with or if I need to open it back up. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to Find a seam ripper here and open it a few more stitches. Okay, that should be plenty. Okay, now where I left it open, I'm going to trim off the extra insole right there. And then I'm just going to fold all this in and try to make it look as round and smooth as possible and give it a good iron. And then we will quilt it with some decorative stitches. I don't know if you can hear that rain outside, but it is very welcome in dry West Texas. So my lighting is not as good today because it's a little overcast, but I will gladly give that up to have some rain. See, my iron's making a liar out of me. Now it's steaming. That's a good thing. It's always hard to get curved edges turned under and look neatly. I 
That looks pretty good, though. Okay, I'm going to take this back over the sewing machine, and I am going to stitch around the edge to top stitch it just to make sure that this edge gets caught and sewn under. And then, which end is the pointy end? I think this is supposed to be the pointy end there. I may have to pin this. Okay, then I'm going to stitch the veins in it. Something like that. And that will quilt it and make it look more like a leaf. So let's go do that. Right, our leaf is done. Give it a good steam. See if you can see the veins that were quilted in there. Uh, I changed my machine thread to orange and sewed my bias strip together. And now we're ready. to begin on the orange part of it. Okay, I am going to sew, I'm sorry, it's gonna go from the back side. We're going to sew all the way around this little indention here. Now, the reason we cut it on the bias is so it will stretch around that. Bias stretches. If we had cut it just straight, there's no way we could have got it to lay smooth around here. So I'm going to take this over the machine and do a quarter inch stitch there and then I'll cut off the excess. All right, I'm going to come to this side and just cut off the excess. Now, I'm going to turn this to the front and iron it. Then I'm going to iron under So it, about half of what's sticking out so that it kind of meets right with my seam here. And this is a pretty sharp curve, but it's gonna, it's gonna lay fine. Okay, then I'm going to turn it over again, right at the seam. And iron that. And do you see how nice and smoothly that lays? I will cut off the excess here.
and I'll take it over to the machine and top stitch it. But when I'm doing that, I want to, yeah, it's this side, address this piece of it. So it's, this side's a little bit flatter. That's what on, goes on top. This is the more curved side. So we're going to do the same thing again on this piece and go around the bottom. So I will do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut off some excess here. Yeah, that's plenty. I will do that at the same time I top stitch this. So let's make it. Let's steam this real good. See how nice and flat that lays? If we had done a straight piece, it would have been all bunched up. Now I'm going to do the same. Thing with this piece. lot of extra here it's just gonna get in the way and I'm going to turn it halfway in and then let it lay right on top of our first seam Now I'm going to just go top stitch that little piece. Get rid of this extra. Almost cut that a little too short there, but it's going to be fine. So let me run top stitch that piece. Okay, let's steam that. Now, you're probably wondering why we did all that. And it's because we are going to overlap those two pieces. We're going to stick our stem in there and our leaf. Actually, I think I'll wait and, and just top stitch the leaf on like we did before because we, we want it, well, that's not very even. <laughs> I'm literally just laying the bias on top of itself there with the stem in the middle. And it's even sticking out a little bit there so we have enough, but that won't show once it's quilted. It's all going to be wrapped up inside the quilting. So I'm going to pin three sides. Now this makes it a little bit thick right there. But that's okay. It's not too thick to sew through. Okay, so I'm going to take that over to the machine. Okay, 
I made a mistake. We weren't supposed to cut the back and all these little pieces. We were just going to do the front that way. So I cut out a new back and I don't have any more Insel Bright until my order comes in. So we are just going to piece it for now. I think I'll run this over to the machine and kind of stitch it together real gently. Okay, I apologize for that. I had this all planned out in my head and I knew I didn't want to cut the back out and for some reason I forgot when I got over here. Okay. Let's put our pot holder together. And the reason I cut that out that way is so so it wasn't just an orange circle, so we it's like we're looking at this not straight on, but kind of from the top. I just wanted it to have a little more dimension than just a plain orange circle. So I am going to, before I pin it all, I'm gonna use some 505 temporary adhesive. Make sure my googly eyes are going straight. Okay, now I'm gonna put a couple pins in it just to hold it. And I'm gonna take it over the machine and this time I'm gonna quilt it with the pattern. I love to find pattern fabrics that I can follow for the quilting. So I'm gonna go down all these lines and these lines and quilt it. So join me at the sewing machine. decided to just do the diagonal ones because that they were so close together that that was tight enough. Plus I wanted it to have a little bit of a different quilting pattern than the apple did. Now I'm just going to kind of round this out and trim off all the excess. And we're going to put our binding on it and tack down our leaf. And we will be done. Okay, we're gonna flip it over to the back side. And I'm going to start up here with the right side down of the binding. And I'm going to stitch it all the way around 
let me think, how do I want to finish it off? I think I'll just leave a little, I think I'll start about here and then I'll connect it when I get all the way around. Okay, let's go do that. hope you saw how I connected this when I got back around I left a gap from about here to here so I could sew that seam and now we're going to turn it to the front and we're going to fold under so the raw edges meet and then fold on top of our seam we're going to do that all the way around. It's going to kind of take care of itself because it's round like this. And it just naturally pulls in. I'm going to go top stitch that and change out my thread and so we can sew on our green leaf. Okay, one more steam. And I should probably tell you that I didn't necessarily make this pot holder relative to this one as far as size, although apples and oranges are pretty close to the same size. I'm, I'm making each piece of fruit big enough that it can be used as a pot holder. So if they're a little bit different from fruit to fruit, that's why. Okay. For some reason, all the pictures I looked at of oranges only had one leaf. Apples always had two. So we're going to have one leaf. And I'm going to tuck it right behind here and stitch it down a little bit there and on these sides here so that it stays in place and doesn't come off. So let's do that and we'll be done. I have green thread in the top and I left my orange bobbin so it, uh, so it won't show on the back. And there is our orange next to our apple. And these are both nice size and thickness of pot holders with the Inselbright that will protect your hand. So they're very usable. Uh, I think next time we'll do a banana, or actually a set of bananas uh, that make up one pot holder so it's big enough. And uh, I am working in the background on a log cabin quilt. Here's the yummy fabrics we're using. It's going to be for a little girl, a twin size quilt. So once I get that all, that video all done, I'll post it. But in the meantime, we're going to work on pot holders. So thank you for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed it. 
If so, please give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.